this is my hot point. button. She's got to really get in there and really look at these competitors, and she's got to look at where their where their weaknesses are. What are they not doing right? I mean, I've had clients over the years who've hired private investigators to go in and do this. They've had their relatives go in as as shoppers and mm -hmm. stuff like that, and really get in there. I mean, she's got to really take off the the gloves and get the brass knuckles on if she's really going to do this. And she can promote and leverage all of her successes and the and the special work that she does do for her customers in a newsletter. Mm, I agree. We've got some very good ideas here, and now we've got to give Jennifer Bergman some practical, real, hard word advice, which we're going to do right after this. Welcome back. Our guest Jennifer Bergman is back with us, and we're going to tell her in just a minute how to beat up on the big bad chain store down the street. But first, let's answer a question from one of our viewers. Michelle Freeman watches us on Iowa Public Television, and she writes in, I own a small business on the main street in a really small town. My bookkeeper works for a lot of companies in town, including a couple of my competitors. How can I prevent her from disclosing my sensitive information to the wrong people? It's a good question. Believe it or not, bookkeepers, unlike accountants and lawyers, are not considered professionals in most states, and they're not subject to the same high ethical standards that those folks are. In my experience, a lot of them are underpaid, they're underloved, and some of them, sad to say, can be bought. Your only real protection here, Michelle, is to get a written confidentiality agreement with your bookkeeper and, frankly, all of your other professionals, saying that they will keep all your sensitive information confidential. That way, if they do spill the beans to a competitor, not only can you sue them for breach of contract, but you can sue the competitor for inducing that breach of contract. Okay, time to give Jennifer some advice. Bill, how can she get her customers back? Jennifer, you can build up your personal relationships with your customers and you will really get some great loyalty. And how do you do that? Simply phone those customers after the purchases uh, uh, from your store. See if they're happy. If they're not happy, tell them to bring it back. Uh, garnish the information of their birthdays, their anniversary, their kids' birthdays, send them cards out before. Uh, anything you can do in that realm to build up your customer profile list to make it much more personalized because the big guys ain't going to do that. Right. Uh, you might want to send a gift at Christmas, a gift at Hanukkah. Can Thanksgiving you... would be a great holiday yeah. to celebrate instead to preempt the holiday. Groundhog's Day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, That's one last thing holiday. too is, uh, Jen, uh, get involved in the community. If you're not already involved in the community in your school system, mm -hmm. uh, it pays dividends no end. Right. Nancy, what are some, some of the off-the-wall things she, she can do on the advertising and promotion front? Well, I would encourage you not to spend a lot in advertising because it is so costly, Jennifer, mm -hmm. and I think you're already doing some great things. You are acknowledging your customers' birthdays. I would take that one step further and actually have a, a birthday party uh, uh -huh. in your location. I think also that the work that you are doing um, with the special orders and custom orders that you do for people, uh, I, I have a daughter who's Chinese and it was difficult getting those types of products that would reflect her culture. Right. Uh, I think there are plenty of newsletters that I'm happy to give you the names of that you could promote that type of uh, service, which oh, is yeah, really I'd difficult. Love to do that. Yeah, and absolutely. it's a growing market, especially mm -hmm. in New York City. I mean, you've got oh, a really yeah. nice group of people who have adopted oh, from China and mm -hmm. from other ethnic um, mm -hmm. or other countries. And I think bringing back that newsletter is really a good idea for you. I think that you were yeah. overextending yourself trying to do it monthly. Yeah, definitely. That's a lot of work. I would love to, yeah, I would love to do Jennifer, that. one of your biggest challenges is going to be reshuffling your personnel. Like many small family businesses, you're right now operating in a world where everybody does everything, and I don't think that can continue much longer. Somebody in your organization has to focus their 100% of their time on marketing and PR from now on. Somebody has got to focus their energy 100% mm -hmm. on customer service. I recommend Bill for that job. <laughs> somebody, somebody has got to really focus 100% of their time on competitor intelligence, since you now have many competitors now, and you really have to decide who's going to do what, and that person doesn't do anything else. Jennifer, you've heard a lot of advice, and some of this I know you've heard before. What's the first thing you're going to do tomorrow morning? Well, I'd love to do it all, but I'm not quite sure how, and I guess my question is, how do I get my people to do it so that it can be Real spread quick, out? Bill. Jennifer, you just step right up to the plate. You're going to coach them. You're going to tell them. You're going to show them who's boss and you've got a lot of passion for what you've been doing already and if you set the standards it'll work. Nancy. Well I think also right engaging them and using them their strengths if you have somebody on staff who's a good writer give them the newsletter project or somebody who likes organizing events mm -hmm. let them take over the birthday parties mm -hmm. so start to delegate and manage those tasks. Jennifer thank you very much for sharing this problem with us that big competitor down the street does not stand a chance. I want to thank our experts too Bill Mitchell and Nancy Michaels for your help today you've heard some great advice today 